I'm Grace. It's uh, nice to meet you. I live in uh, Yunnan, China, and today we're going to be talking about something a little bit spooky, something a little bit mysterious. We're going to be talking about some mysteries. So let's go ahead. I'll get my PowerPoint started. Oh, wait, click the wrong thing. <laughs> All right. Um, so hi, I'm Grace. I'm 36 years old. I live in Kunming. Y'all know where that is, I think. Um, could you tell me how old you are and uh, what grade you're in? Could you just type that in the chat box so I could see uh, where we're all from or what our, what our ages are and what grades we're in? Grade seven, Sophia, grade, grade eight. Oh. Oh, grade two. Okay. Age seven, grade two, eight, 11th, fourth, ninth. Yolanda. I like that name. Trey, 10. Okay. Cool. Cool. So you guys, uh, do you like mysterious things? Shanghai, fifth grade. Nice. Yeah. Go ahead. If you could just tell me where you, uh, where you are from true to what city you're in whether you're in China or whether you're in America. Um, Shanghai, woohoo, I've been there. From Canada, okay, cool. Is it cold in China or is it cold in Shanghai yet? In Kunming, it is a little cold. Is it cold in Shanghai? I imagine Canada is very cold, Andy, is that right? Oh, Miss, Miss Agua, yeah, it's cold. Yeah, in Kunming right now, it's about 10 degrees at night, so it's not too bad yet, but we don't have nice indoor heating. Jiaxin. <laughs> oh, Shanghai? Okay, cool. Yeah, I actually spent some time in uh, Zhejiang, in uh, Hangzhou, but I'm over here. Cool. All right, there is China. You were born in Canada, but you're Chinese. Where in China did you live, Yolanda? Okay, cool. So Halloween is in four days on October 31st. Have you guys uh, ever done anything for Halloween? Fujo, okay. Have you guys ever dressed up for Halloween or done anything special for Halloween? You're not going out? Okay. In Canada, I know in America, Halloween is a big deal. Everybody dresses up special. Do they dress up in Canada too? Uh, no one's doing anything special. Yeah, it's a, uh, oh, you want trick or treating? Yeah. So um, you're not, oh yeah, COVID-19, that's yeah, ruining, ruining the fun this year. Don't worry, it will, it will get better soon. And next Halloween, you can go out and trick or treat. But it's a small holiday anyway. It's not, uh, I, I don't think it's so big. In America, we collect candy. It's all about candy. You guys like candy though, right? <laughs> and anyway, when I think of Halloween, Oh, you went in the mall. Okay, cool. Yeah. So like Halloween is in, in four days. And so when I think of Halloween, I really think of like spooky things. Like, so what do you think of when I say Halloween? What's something that you think about? Do you think like, you know, is it spooky about ghosts? Or do you think, oh, tasty. Yeah, food. Yeah, yummy. Yes, lots of candy. <laughs> Anyone else? What do you think about when you think of Halloween? COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19 is kind of spooky. Yeah. Halloween, uh, buying one piece of candy because of the virus. Oh, pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin's a good one. Uh, hey, Jerry, uh, let's, uh, let's use some different, different words there. Okay, dude? Yeah. But we have a, like, I would describe Halloween as mysterious. Do you guys know what that word means? Mysterious? 
Yeah, okay, what does it mean, Trey? Can you tell me what mysterious means? Can you think of another word to describe it? Yeah, mystery. Can you think of anything that's a little bit mysterious? Aliens, yes. The virus, that, that is mysterious. We're not very sure how that all happened. There's a lot of mystery, right? Does this guy look mysterious to you? Yeah. What do you think that cloud is? How the Titanic sank. Yes, that's very mysterious. Aliens and ghosts and witches and zombies. Yeah, that's all very mysterious. So this guy, he's getting covered by a mysterious fog, which brings us to today's book, Witches Unsolved History Mysteries. Dry ice? Dry ice is a bit mysterious. Maybe that maybe that's how they're getting this effect, right? Lots of dry ice. <laughs> possibly, possibly. But dry ice is mysterious. Dry ice and water, yeah, probably. Do you guys know who this is? What this what this this, this thing is? Yeah, it makes lots of fog. Do you know who this like weird looking monkey guy is? Yeah, Bigfoot. How about this? Anybody know what this is? What is that? Is that a dinosaur? Anyone know what that is? Big goose? No, it's not a goose. Loch Ness. Very good, William. Yes, that's a Loch Ness monster. Anyone know where the Loch Ness monster lives? It lives, no, not in Canada. It lives in Scotland. Scotland. It lives up in, up above England in Scotland. Yeah. So this book is by Donna Herrick, Her Herrick, Dana Harwick, Scotland, not not the river Scotland. It lives in Scotland, in a in a lake in Scotland, in the Loch Lake. Ah, oh, you like my accent. I'm glad you like that. Okay, so let's go here and let's look here. Okay, so I'm gonna read. Y'all follow along. Oh come on, is that real? You will wonder that when you read about the strange disappearances, larger than life creatures and mysterious happenings in this book. Are they real? What happened? Only history knows for sure. Could anything like that happen again? Perhaps that's a mystery for another time. Okay, so here are some things to think about, okay? Uh, how could some of, the, some of history's most famous figures disappear? So we're going to read about all types of weird stories in this book, okay? Uh, and then we're also going to wonder, did some of these things really happen, right? We all are watching stuff on the internet, and we have to ask ourselves, is this true or fake, right? Because everybody is faking stuff on the internet, right? They're all faking things. And sometimes someone's like, look, this happened, and they're just like... Pfft. Ha, 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 I tricked you. And so sometimes maybe in history that happened too. So did some of history's biggest moments really happen? And is there another side to these stories that we don't know yet? So we're going to talk about some of these today and I'm curious to see what you all think. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the man in the iron mask. Okay, see this dude here? Does that look like a comfortable mask? You wanna wear that for Halloween? Maybe when there's no COVID. Yeah, see, this mask is no good for COVID because it has a hole in the mouth. So it's not gonna, not gonna protect you. All right, so let's find out about this fella. Okay, so he's had a lot of movies. It says a dozen movies have been made about the mysterious prison, prisoner. They usually show him as a, in a mask made of iron. Ah, sorry, stuttering, going all over the place today. All right, so let's look here, okay? It's hard to do anything without being watched. Cameras are everywhere, especially in China. They are posted on buildings. People have camera phones ready to film what they see. You would be surprised how many times you appear on film each day. But it wasn't always this way. There were times when people came and went without video records. And even now, people who want to disappear or make others disappear can figure out a way. Do you guys know anyone who's like always on their phone? They're like, oh, look at me. <laughs> they have to show everybody, right? 
their life on the phone. Do you know anyone like that? Always taking pictures of themselves or showing videos to other people. So it wasn't like that long ago. Yeah, we all, one day yesterday I was at the coffee shop and there was this guy, he was just sitting there for two hours filming everybody who come in and talking to, he was talking just to people on the internet for two hours, it was crazy. No, this is the Opal. All right, so let's look here, the mass prisoner. From around 1669 until his death in 1703, a mysterious man was held in the jails throughout France. Most of the time he was in the Bastille. No one ever saw this man's face. It was always covered with a black velvet mask. The prisoner's name was Eustace Dagu, or this has it, oh look, he has a French pronunciation. Wait, okay, Eustace Doge, ah, French, you stay doge, right? So D-A-U-G-R, when we say it the French way, is doge. That is probably not his real name. Doge was told that if he talked about himself, he would be killed. Only the head of the Bastille knew, only the head of the Bastille was allowed to see his face. No one knows who he was or why he was jailed. Okay, so one of these, like if you read here, the true king, right? So one theory was is that King Louis the 14th, he had a twin brother and he was like the younger brother. And so King Louis the 14th was like, shoot, I don't want my little brother to come up and try to take the king for me. So I'm going to lock him up. He ain't going to try and get the, get the throne for me. Um, so that was one theory about this guy. And as you can see, the Bastille is actually a huge fortress. Okay. Um, this was actually like raided during the French Revolution and they freed all the prisoners and now there's a holiday in France called the uh, Bastille Day. Um, but anyway, this guy, the, the man in the iron mask, he, he was in jail for a long, long, long time, like 20 years, and he was never allowed to take off his mask. How does that sound? Oh, how do you think he feels? That's, that's not the man in the iron mask, but it's pretty creepy looking, right? Okay, um, so the man in the iron mask, one theory is that he was the king's brother. Another theory was that he was like this general. Yeah, that's Jason, <laughs> almost an iron mask. It's Halloween, you know, masks. Um, yeah, creepy, right? So the man in the iron mask, one theory was that he was the king's brother. Another theory was, is that he was this, uh, he was this general who made a mistake and the king really didn't like him. And he was like, okay, you made a mistake. You're going to jail. Another idea about who he was is that he was a famous writer who said some things that, um, that got him into trouble. And so they said, okay, we're going to lock you up now. Yeah. And then like, uh, there, there were a lot of different ideas about who he was, but they never knew. Like he could have just been one, one other theory is that he was just like, a normal person he was a normal person and one day he, he said something stupid or maybe he saw something that he wasn't supposed to see like maybe he saw somebody like the king do something stupid and the king said well instead of killing you i'm going to put this mask on you to make you look like freaky jason and you're never going to be allowed to talk about yourself or tell anybody about what you saw so either way bad situation for him oh Ah, here's another guy, another man in the iron mask. <laughs> Yay, Jason, or yeah, do you know what this cartoon is? Anyone know? Yeah, Simpsons, I like the Simpsons. You know, I'm scared to watch that, the Jason movie. It's, I can't watch, I can't watch scary movies. <laughs> all right, you gotta be careful what you watch. Okay, so, all right, on to our next one. Okay, D.B. Cooper. Now there's some really fun things about this one. So this is a great story, okay? This is a guy who like, stole a bun uh, a bunch of uh he didn't steal anything he hijacked a plane and then he like demanded a bunch of money like two hundred thousand dollars from the fbi and they gave it to him and so well, well let's read this okay so db cooper okay this is another one all right yeah jason died and so did the man in the iron mask okay uh, on November 24th, 1971, a man entered a Portland airport. He called himself Dan Cooper. That was not his real name. That day, he bought a ticket to Seattle. After takeoff, Cooper handed a note to the flight attendant. It read, you are being hijacked. Okay, you know what's funny? 
it so the note read you are being hijacked you know what the woman did yeah she ignored it she ignored it she was like oh okay she just like took the note and like put it in her pocket and like kept walking so he's like he handed her a note saying you're hijacked and she's like oh you know just put it in her pocket he's like miss you need to look at the note you're being hijacked so it yeah it wasn't as like smooth as she thought it you know he was trying to be like oh like you're being hijacked and give her a note and and the lady's like ah, da, 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 da. you know she probably thought it was something unimportant but he's like hey i'm hijacking the plane and so he wasn't so sneaky as he thought he was um so anyway yeah so he gave the note to the the stewardess yes i think we've seen the same video on this andy i think we were watching the same video and yeah, so he said he wanted money, parachutes, and fuel. The FBI gathered the ransom, and the plane circled above for, uh, and the plane circled above. So they got all the money together, and then it landed two hours later in Seattle. Cooper let most of the people off. He he got the ransom money and four parachutes. The plane refueled and took off again. Cooper had the pilot fly low and head to the south. Then Cooper jumped out of the plane. He was gone. No one knew what his real name was. The FBI isn't sure if he is dead. They're still looking for him. Ah, oh, you learned this. Okay. All right. So the FBI, they gave him, uh, was it four? I thought it was two parachutes. Okay. The FBI gave him two parachutes, but get this. This is a funny thing. One of the parachutes was broken, right? Did you get that? One of the parachutes was broken. Okay. So the FBI actually gave him a parachute that was sewn up. And then they also gave him a parachute that was just like a, a military style jump. Yeah, one was broken. One of them was sewn up. Yeah, the sources I read said, said that he had two parachutes. Maybe, maybe I'm mis, misremembering. But um, so one of, the, one of the parachutes was broken. FBI is like, yeah, sure, here's a parachute. Guy doesn't know what he's getting. All right, now the other parachute that they gave him was just like a military one. Like you couldn't guide it around it was just like a they call it a paratrooper parachute and um so he jumps out of the parachute now think about it. he has two hundred thousand dollars in cash okay in in like two suitcases right he's got his shades he's got his parachute and he's got his suitcases okay think what's going to happen how is he going to let go of the suitcase and pull the the cord to open the parachute if he even is using the right parachute right and so maybe this guy hadn't thought, yeah, maybe this guy hadn't thought too much about what he was gonna do. So he has two suitcases. And then also, you know, you open the parachute and whoa, okay. And um, so there, so one of the parachutes was broken and he jumped also out at the nighttime, okay? So he, he jumped at the nighttime and no experienced parachutist no no experience no experienced uh like jumper jumps at night and so yeah there's some evidence that maybe this guy wasn't as clever and sneaky as he thought he was maybe he just wanted money all right so they never found his body they never found him why are they still looking for him so one possibility is his parachute failed so either you know he actually put on the other good parachute and um he, he didn't actually use it the right way and he jumped too low and he jumped at night and he ended up you know hitting the ground and dying um but also the fbi gave him one broken parachute it was actually like sewing together yes um and then they actually found the money it wasn't found in a river yolanda the money was actually found like washed up on like a beach so they actually found um they actually found like a lot of uh the money that the FBI had given him, but they found it like washed up on a beach. Um, so it's possibly that he like jumped out and like he wore the broken parachute and just like smacked into the ground and died. Uh, it aliens is possible. Yeah, it said uh, he jumped over a swamp. It was a swampy area. Yeah, he jumped over a swamp, but he jumped at night. And so they're not sure really like what, what happened to this guy. There's been people have been like, oh, uh, like they're dying and they're like, I'm Davy Cooper. Um, but they've never found the body and they've never actually, uh, 
yeah, recovered all the money, but they found like a lot of the money washed up, which if they found some of the money washed up on a beach later, then it was uh, possible that the money actually, uh, you know, wasn't spent because maybe he didn't jump and survive. But anyway, the, the stack of paperwork for his case is over 40 feet long. So like you look here, so that's what, like uh, 13 meters, 13 meters long, a stack of paperwork. So, you know, honestly, I haven't read through all the paperwork for this case. So I'm, I'm not sure about some of the details, but you know, 13 meters long of paperwork. That's, that's a lot of paperwork. All right, Jimmy Hoffa. This stack of paperwork, where's the typo? I have a typo. All right. High five, Andy. Good eyes. Anyway. Good eyes. All right. Let's, uh, oh, wait. Uh, okay. Which, where's the typo? Suit parachute failure. He died in a jump. Oh, feel long. 40 feel long. Yes. Wow. Good eyes. Good eyes, Andy. Good job, man. It should say 40 feet long. All right, moving on. Jimmy Hoffa. This guy was a union boss from 1932 to 1975. He led the Teamsters, which is kind of like a union club, one of the most powerful unions of the time. But Hoffa didn't always play nice. He may have worked with organized crime. Actually, he did work with organized crime. They know he did. On July 30th, 1975, Hoffa was supposed to meet two men at a Detroit restaurant. Hoffa was nervous. One of the men was a big crime boss. When the men didn't show up, Hoffa called his wife. He said he had been stood up. Hoffa never came home. A truck driver said he had seen Hoffa in the backseat of a car that nearly hit his truck coming out of the parking lot. The car was traced to a man whom Hoffa had helped care for. Police dogs found Hoffa's scent in the trunk of the car, but everyone had an alibi. Police never found a body. They feel sure they feel sure. Oh, I'm sorry. They feel sure they know who killed Hoffa. And they know why. They just don't know what happened to Hoffa, and they don't know where his body is. Okay? Yeah. So with the uh, alibi, like everyone was like, the, this is a funny thing. So alibi is basically like everyone had a reason I didn't do it or, you know, I was somewhere else doing this. So everybody had like really good alibis, but their alibis were so good that the FBI and the police were like, this is a little bit too good. Like almost like you knew you we were going to be coming around and asking you if you killed Jimmy Hoffa. Okay. So um, they're pretty sure he's been killed, but they don't know who, they don't, they're not really sure like who killed him. Like they, they have an idea about who killed him, but they're not sure like what happened to his body and they can't really do anything about it because they don't have any evidence. Um, so yeah, you guys know this, Fat Tony. Okay, so Fat Tony is with the mob, okay? And if there's one thing you guys need to remember about Jimmy Hoffa, this is, this is some sage advice for you. You need to remember this forever, okay? Don't mess with the mob. Okay. Uh, the mob is not your friend, boys and girls. Don't mess with the mob, right? Neither are the triads or anything else. Just be good. <laughs> okay, otherwise you might end up like, you might end up like Jimmy Hoffa. Okay, no, 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 there, there, there's always a price for the mob. Yeah, no, 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 don't mess with the mob. Mob's not your friend, Andy, no, 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 no. Um, they always will win. <laughs> All right, uh, next one we have here is uh, Amelia Earhart, okay? Oh, sorry, trying to move something around here. Okay, Amelia Earhart. Now you guys may have known about her. This was actually an amazing woman. Amelia Earhart, she was the first a woman to actually fly across the Atlantic. And she was the first woman uh, to do a lot of things. She really was pretty amazing. And so it's kind of sad what happened to her. 
So in the early days of plane travel, very few women flew planes. Amelia Earhart was one of the first. In 1932, she was the first woman to cross the Atlantic solo. That means all alone, okay? Uh, and she tried to circle the globe in 1937, but during the flight, radio contact was lost. She was near an island where she was supposed to land. The last thing anyone heard from her was, we must be on you, but we cannot see you. Fuel is running low. All was silent after that. Earhart and her plane have never been found. Okay, so uh, she actually wasn't flying alone. She had, uh, she did have a, a navigator with her. And so both of them are poof, gone. Um, when she left, uh, so she was flying, uh, when, when she left, uh, she was kind of flying near like the Fiji Solomon Island area, Solomon, Solomon Island area. When she left, there was a very strong headwind. And so uh, they're not sure if maybe she ran out of fuel um, or if she like her instrumentation, her, her compass and things stopped working. Um, but she, yeah, she just vanished. So they never actually found her body. There are many people who think that perhaps Earhart crashed on a remote island and survived. Even if it were true, she would long have since died. But stories of her survival continue. Yeah, aliens is actually something people talk about, right? Um, so yeah, people keep thinking like, oh, I saw Elvis, I saw Amelia Earhart, right? Um, so oftentimes when like a famous person dies, uh, in a tragic or mysterious way, there seem to be countless people who don't really believe the person has died. And stories pop up everywhere of people who insist they have seen the person alive and well. The rock and roll superstar Elvis Presley is an example of this. He died in 1977, but people say they still have spotted him today. Yeah, like, yeah, people think like, oh yeah, no, they're not died. It's, it's hard to let go of people when they die, right? And so people are like, no, we loved Amelia Earhart. She was, she was like, they called her the babe of the sky. Like she was so, yeah, she was a babe of the sky. And so people were like devastated when she died. So this is uh yeah. So someone mentioned aliens. Yeah, one of the theories is, is that she was an alien or not an alien, that aliens like abducted her and she, uh, and she, uh, you know, got taken up to Mars or whatever. Another theory is that she crashed on an island. And there's a little bit more evidence to support this theory is that she crashed on an island. And you see this huge thing here? You know, this is, this is called a coconut crab. And it's as big as that garbage can, it's huge. Um, and they're strong enough that they can actually crack coconuts open with their claw. And so one theory is that she crashed on an island and the coconut crabs ate her. You like to eat crab, right? Crab is delicious. Some of you live in Shanghai and have excellent crab. How would you like the crab to eat you? Okay. Another theory is that, yeah, Canada does not have good crab. I'm sorry, hang in there, Cheryl. One day you'll get some, some to the ocean again and have some good crab. Another theory is that maybe she was a spy. Uh, that she was working for the U.S. Air Force because this work this happened in 1937, and so this was like kind of pre World War II. So one theory is that she was a spy and she crashed on an island dominated by the Japanese, and then the Japanese um, like took her captive. Uh, yeah, some people think maybe she faked her death. And then over here we also have kind of the obvious answer, uh, but you can you can decide for yourselves, right? Like. Maybe she just like crashed in the water and her plane, plane sank to the ground. Like that, that could have happened too, right? So is it aliens? Is it she crashed on an island and coconut crabs ate her? Or was she a spy? Or did her plane just crash in the ocean? Can we ever know? It's a mystery. So what do you think happened to her? What do you think? Do you think it was aliens? Do you think it was a spy eaten by crabs? Island. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. maybe she maybe she didn't get eaten by a crab. Oh, probably a spy. Possible because she was flying over an area that we knew had you know, like Japanese presence, and she was an American pilot. Aliens. Maybe, maybe that's kind of fun, huh? Big brain. Ah, now who has a typo? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of different things. So will we ever know? Probably not, but you know, it's fun to think about. All right, the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, now guys, spoiler alert. 
it's probably not as mysterious as it sounds. Bermuda Triangle is a place where dozens of boats, planes, and people have vanished. It is located in the Atlantic Ocean. Some people think this area is very, very dangerous. They think it is a magnetic field that causes a compass to stop working. Others think the strong water currents and weather conditions are the reason for the disappearances. Okay, so you figured out how it worked? Maybe she's saying, okay. So, okay, now uh, Amelia Earhart did not get lost in the Bermuda Triangle. She actually got lost uh, over on the other side, like way over here, okay? So in 1945, uh, they had they they had like a boats vanish there, a navy boat, uh, and the navy boat was called I have it written down here, uh, the USS Cyclops. So that's what this is saying up here, the 1918. Um, now that boat, they actually realized that it was they had put too much on the boat. They had actually put like too much metal on the boat, and so the boat was really really heavy. Okay. And so that actually, the, this, uh, the Cyclops, the Navy boat vanishing is actually not that mysterious because uh, they're like, oh, we put too much stuff on the boat. Oh, sorry. Are you guys seeing my comments here? Uh, uh, okay, so the Bermuda Triangle, there, is that better? Okay. So actually the boat had too much iron on it and it actually was manganese, but it had too much stuff on it. And that's why they think that's like, they think that they think that that sank. They think that that sank. Ah, try saying that five times fast. Um, so the boat had too much uh, iron ore on it and it, uh, or manganese ore on it and it crashed. Um, but what's really interesting is that this is one of the busiest boat lanes in the world. Okay, so there's a lot of boats that go through here. And actually, this is the interesting part. If you look at the amount of boats that travel through here, if you look at the amount of boats that travel through here, there's actually no more accidents than you would expect. So it's just more of the fact like it's a very, very busy shipping area probably than it is like anything super mysterious because they've, they've gone and they've looked for a long time. All right, anyway, we're just doing a little bit on the Bermuda Triangle. Whoa, there's that Bermuda Triangle. It's, is that aliens you think? It's perhaps aliens. Either way, a lot of boats are going into it, but it's probably not, it's probably not a uh, mystery so much as it is like, it's just so very busy that more, more accidents happen there. It's kind of like, you know, is there more accidents on Beijing Lu or on like, you know, Hong Yun Lu? Like, of course there's more accidents on Beijing Lu because it's a busier road. So that's more likely the explanation for that. Um, all right, let's see what time do we have? We're getting kind of close. Okay, all right, we still got some good time. All right, so Anastasia, have you guys ever seen this movie? You can't see the board. Can you, can other people see the board? Here, let me see. Um, let's see if we can get you to see the board. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry you can't see the board. Uh, maybe check some of your computer settings. Um, okay. But can you see the PowerPoint? Do you mean like this board behind me? Do you mean the board behind me or do you mean like the PowerPoint? Because there's nothing on the board behind me. It's just white. So don't worry about the board. All right, so Anastasia. Uh, they actually, Disney made a good movie about this and it was about this little girl who was this missing Russian princess. Um, yeah, she did die, okay? So give you a little bit of background. Uh, there was big trouble in Russia in early 1900s. The people wanted to get rid of the old rulers. Nicholas was a current ruler. He was married and had five children. Anastasia Romanov was his youngest daughter. Okay, so Anastasia, yes, they were all shot. It was so sad. Anastasia though, 
she was like kind of the little naughty one. She wouldn't really listen to her parents so much. And like, she would kind of run away and do stuff. And so they thought for a long time, maybe she survived, like she didn't listen to people and ran off and escaped. Um, but in 1918, the secret police killed Nicholas and his family. Uh, but people, they love this, you know, little girl Anastasia, they couldn't think of her dying. And so they wondered, did Anastasia survive? Uh, for years, many people thought so. Several women claimed they were the lost duchess. They stepped forward to claim the family fortune, but in 2009, science proves them all wrong. It is certain the whole family died that day. Yeah, Soviet Union. So this was, he, he was a Tsar and he, and then during the, the revolution, they all got, uh, his whole family was murdered. So it's very, very sad. Um, but you know why they probably picked Anastasia's name? why they picked Anastasia? Because Anastasia means resurrection. So you guys know what resurrection means? That means to live again. So her name actually means resurrection. So I think probably people were like, they were hoping that she wasn't dead. Like, oh, maybe the child named resurrection will resurrect and survive. But no, it's sad. She just died. So anyway, not so much of a mystery, but there you have it. All right. Ah, Jack the Ripper. So this is more Halloween-y. Okay. Now, if you're going to be a villain, a bad guy for Halloween, this would be a good guy. So yeah, what this? Okay. Who was Jack the Ripper? Okay. So this is one of the most famous criminals in history known is known as Jack the Ripper. In 1888, he murdered several poor women in London. He was never caught. Today, there are more than 100 theories about who he was, but the case has never been solved. So this guy, he killed, I think it was like 13 women? Uh, London, England, not, not Ontario. Ontario. So he killed, he killed uh, more than 10 women, okay? Um, and he, they were all very poor women. And like, he would actually like cut out parts of their body. Like this is getting really creepy, right? So he'd actually like, he first took like the liver and then he took like other parts of their bodies and like, they couldn't figure out who this guy was. Um, and so uh, they kept looking and looking but they never found the guy. And so like he'd kill a couple people and then he would like write letters to the police mean like, ha ha ha, I killed people, try and catch me now, coppers. And um, they never were able to catch him. And so they're not sure who he was. So after the murders, a mysterious letter surfaced. It was written by a person claiming to be the murderer. The author promised to cut off the ear of his next victim. Three days later, another murder took place. The murdered victim's ear was partially nicked. Was this just a coincidence? <clears throat> so a lot of times when there's like, horrible crimes like this people like copy each other and so was it a copycat we we don't know um so yeah they actually gave the newspaper gave him the name jack the ripper and he was like i kind of like that I, i'm gonna let you call me jack the ripper okay so given who jack the ripper what he could do because he was like cutting up people's kidneys and like taking parts out of his body they think maybe he was like a doctor like it's possible he was like a doctor that you know or a medical student who was like ah i'm going to i'm going to cut open some people and take their kidneys um other people think that maybe it was he was actually really a she that it wasn't a man but, but that actually it was a midwife somebody who helps women have babies because a woman like somebody who helps another person has a baby also is kind of aware of the human body might be able to cut open another person um, a gallbladder, it, it produces something that helps you digest stuff. Um, yeah, so it was possible that it, that maybe it wasn't a man, but maybe it was a woman. And like, if you help, help a woman have a baby, you're going to be covered in blood anyway, right? Because having a baby, there's a lot of blood involved. And so maybe it wasn't a man, maybe it was a midwife that, you know, oh, it's just, you know, Someone, she's covered in blood because she helped someone have a baby. Another theory, now this is kind of the more interesting one, is that uh, there was this uh, prince who liked to hang out in this area, uh, an English prince, and uh, it's rumored that he went a little bit crazy. Cuckoo, cuckoo. 
and uh queen victoria actually was like oh no my crazy cousin has lost his mind i better cover this all up and that it was a cover-up by the royals but either way they don't know what happened to this guy to this day it's pretty pretty spooky um that yeah all these women died and nobody knows who did it it's yeah scary but don't worry, whoever he is now, he's long gone. Because that was 1888, and you'd be over 130 years old at this point. <laughs> All right. Ah, the moon landing. What do you guys think? Did it happen or did it not happen? What do you think? Moon landing. Have you ever heard this controversy? Moon landing. Did it happen or not? So I have one friend from Australia and he is convinced that it didn't happen. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I have, I have family that works for NASA. And um, yeah, no, he's just like, no, no way it happened. It was fake. Okay. So, all right, let's look at this. Can we believe it? Grainy images on a TV show something unbelievable, a flash of something large, a hairy, darts through the forest a serpent-like shadow arches over the water and then it's gone a poor man with little education creates the greatest plays of all time can any of this be real as okay this is the moon landing as an amazed world watch the first people la landed on the moon on july 20th 1969 people watched the event on their small tvs they could hardly believe men had landed safely and stepped on the moon's rocky surface to this day, not everyone believes they really did. In fact, some people think that it, think people have, some people don't think, in fact, some don't think people have ever landed on the moon. They insist that everything was done on a movie set. Okay, so this theory, there's a really well-known uh, director named Stanley Kubrick. And Kubrick uh, said that it, said that oh yeah no this isn't really uh real uh well he didn't say it but he so he was a really good director he could do special effects like nobody had ever seen and um stanley kubrick died very suddenly and so some people think that like maybe maybe uh the government like killed stanley kubrick because he was getting ready to to uh like blab to the press to tell the press that oh yeah i faked the moon landing um yeah so how did they shoot the takeoff so it, it's interesting talking with my friend i believe the moon landing happened but my friend does not uh but we talk about it and we sometimes and what he says is that oh no we launch rockets to space all the time because of satellites but that uh we just launched a rocket and then instead of actually going to the moon, we just said, okay, yeah, the rocket's in space and nobody could really watch it when it, cause the moon's quite far away. And then he says like, uh, then they just went and they went to a film studio and and filmed it and, and filmed it in like a movie set. Yeah, so he says like all of the rocket being tracked by NASA was fake, okay? Now, on one hand, like, you know, that takes a whole lot of people lying. And it's, if somebody, they say it's just like film effects and wires is how they say they got the low grab. Okay, so if you think about it, how many people would have to be in on that lie? Probably like a few thousand. Somebody would eventually come forward with a lot of evidence, right? You would think that. I, I'm, yeah, he's just saying like they faked it on, on the movie set, like, and the orbit, he says, like they they faked it. Um, yeah, he says he says it was like my friend really believes it's all just movie effect. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm I'm with you. Um, but if you think about it just for a minute, do you think it would be easier to send somebody to the moon or to build a movie set? Like that that is an interesting question, right? Like it would be easier to build a movie set, right? Yeah, it would, it would, in some ways, like if you think about the dynamics, it would be too much effort for a movie. Uh, yeah, so anyway, the, the idea is, is that maybe 
we tricked the Russians because the Russians were also trying to go to the moon. And uh, so they're saying maybe it was, maybe we decided, okay, we'll just keep the Russians trying to send people to the moon. And then like, we'll, we'll pretend that we sent someone to the moon. Ha 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 ha, we tricked the Russians. Um, yeah, the Russians did use pencil in place space, but we developed gel point pens. So yeah, that's uh, interesting, uh, an interesting notion. Okay, we're gonna do one more and then I'm gonna open it up for some questions. I had more I wanted to cover, but we're getting a little short on time. Oh, oh yes, this is a good one. Okay, this is actually not really so debatable anymore. So you guys know like uh, in the United States and in like Canada maybe we're like, oh yeah, you know, Columbus discovered America. But actually there's more and more evidence that's not true. For years, schools have taught that Christopher Columbus found America, but is this true? In 1492, Columbus sailed from Europe with three ships. He was looking for riches in the Indies. Instead, he landed on an island near Florida, but they were already people there. So some people say Columbus didn't really discover America. Historians still argue about who the first uh, to come to the new world was. Okay. So Christopher Columbus, actually, this is this is less and less disputed, like more. So we think Columbus discovered America, at least that's kind of what we thought 50 years ago. But like now we know, like before Columbus, like almost 500 years before, a guy named Leif Erikson, a Viking, discovered America. He just, you know, didn't have like a king to, you know, a bunch of people to go tell it to. But even more interesting that than that is uh, the Chinese, and this is much better documented, uh, traveled to America before Columbus in 1422. Okay, so this is where we're gonna end. Um, and I was just was researching this right before class. Uh, but this guy, a mariner named Zheng He, who's actually born in Kunming, China. What? Okay, during the Ming Dynasty. Um, and he actually was born to a Muslim family. And uh, the, the emperor at the time, like they came, forced him into servitude, realized, oh, hey, this guy is pretty smart. And uh, said, hey, here's a fleet. And he went to America and he discovered America like 70 years before Columbus, which is crazy, but it's, but more and more evidence is actually coming out to support this. There's actually a book called 1422. It's in English, but it's like a fat book. Like we're talking like, it's like five centimeters thick. If you read this book, I'd be like extra credit points for the rest of your life. Um, but yeah, so yeah, 1422 actually Zheng He discovered America. Um, so yeah, that's another interesting little mysterious history fact. So it wasn't Columbus, but it was Jung Hum. All right, so I think we're about out of time uh, and I've been told to leave the last few minutes for you guys to ask some questions. So I'm gonna stop uh, the screen sharing and yeah, open up the floor if you would like to uh, ask some questions. Sounds good? Anybody have any questions? No? Come on, Jerry, not even one. Have you guys ever heard of Jung Ho before? No? Well, look him up. 1422. This is a uh, Chinese history. Uh, you want to see the Bigfoot? All right, I'll show you the Bigfoot. All right, if you feel free to ask questions, but I'll show you the Bigfoot one if you want. Ah, okay, yeah, okay, we almost made it to the end. So here's Bigfoot right here. So in Canada, Sasquatch, right? America, Bigfoot, Brazil, Mapingari, Nepal, Yeti, India is in Mande Barung. Indonesia is a Sarangigi. Australia is a Yowie. 
So there's Bigfoot for you. Any other mysteries? Oh, crop circles are a good mystery too. Okay, now this is actually real footage or real footage. And this is some of the footage of Bigfoot that they're not sure what to do with. Like most people are like, oh, Bigfoot is a joke. He's just a hoax. Other people think that, um, you know, maybe Bigfoot could be a real thing. But this video is actually interesting because it actually, you can see his muscles moving. So if it was just a man in a monkey suit, is it a, uh, is it really a, uh, you know, is it a man in a monkey suit or is it actually like a real cre creature, you know, because the, the way he moves. So this is some footage people aren't so sure about. Why are Russians and Americans even enemies? Okay, well, personally, I have a lot of Russian friends, so I don't think of Russians as enemy. But part of it is because during the Cold War, which was from when Russia started being like a very, very strict communist regime to being uh, like not being a communist regime, uh, they had like different ideas. And so America had like nuclear weapons pointed at Russia and Russia had nuclear weapons pointed at America. And everyone was just very angry with each other. Yeah, but I'm not angry with Russians. I have Russian friends. I love Russians. Is there actually any, is there actually a school that teaches magic? Hogwarts? Um, I mean, there's a lot of imaginary schools. Um, there's a lot of like, so if you mean magic, like how to do magic tricks. Yeah, there's schools that teach you how to do like make make magic tricks and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, like entertainment schools. Okay, there is two students who want to ask a question by microphone. Should I open it for you? Yes. Okay, uh, first one is Brandon. Hi, Hi. Brandon. Hi. Um. Today you talked about um, the mysterious um, stories, different stories in the world. And I probably get um, pretty interested in one of the fourth or fifth that you told, told us about. Um, probably was uh, a DB, DB Cooper, that one. Was, oh, yeah. Like he got uh, how many dollars? Uh, what I read and what I, what I watched when I was doing research on this was 200,000. So that's yeah. not a lot of money today, but it's a lot back then. Yeah. Um, 200,000 money. And I thought, um, can you tell us why did he want, like a lot of people say it was a fake bomb that it was just a making a bomb, but not a real bomb. Like it was just, um, trying to, um, scared that, the in the plane that the people who worked in a plane and he was not a real bomb to be could have been if he pressed a button and it could have exploded it yeah yeah that's possible but okay if uh, somebody comes up to you and they look kind of scary and they come up to you and they have something that looks like a bomb on them and they say i have a bomb are you gonna be like oh yeah let me see let me look are you gonna do that? Um, not really. That that pretty acts like an idiot. Yeah, yeah. So like, if someone's like, "I have a bomb," and you're like, "Oh yeah, let me look. I don't think that's a bomb," you know, like, mm. <laughs> yeah. So the FBI just assumed like he may or may not have a bomb. Like they they weren't sure, and so they just wanted to be wanted to be safe, right? Yeah, yeah. you're gonna. Yeah, so I think that's it. But uh, yeah, honestly, um, one of the theories about why maybe he wanted the money actually is that he was a college student. And he was like, you know, college students don't have much money. You know, you're a student and you're eating top ramen all day long. But college students, so one theory is that he was a college student on vacation because this actually happened during like a like a vacation period, like before one school was there. So there's different ideas about his motive, about why he may have done it. Yeah, like I thought he was a pretty um, smart guy to let everybody um, get down of the plane. And then he let, why, and can you tell us, um, just for the last question, how, why would he like to drive 
drove the plane to Mexico, but not getting up far north, but just getting up to Mexico. Um, what do what does he want? I mean, they never caught him, so they're they're not sure what his what his real motive was because they're not even sure who he was. But maybe he had like some friends in Mexico that he was going to meet up with and eat tacos or something like that. But you know, he jumped out of the plane. Uh, the plane was very low to the ground, and he actually jumped out of the plane during nighttime, which is very, very dangerous. Like experienced paratroopers, they generally try to avoid that. And so there's there's some evidence to suggest that maybe he wasn't as well versed. Maybe he wasn't as clever as he thought he was because he had like two big suitcases of money, and now he's jumping out of the plane. And when you pull your parachute, you know it's going to jerk you. And so when you when it gets jerked, like what's going to happen? Would you be able to hold on to that money? You know, might you hurt your arm or something like that? So there, but they never caught him. They never found a body. So no one's quite sure what to make of him. Oh, okay. So do you think he's still alive? My personal thing, I think it's possible he may have jumped. He may have died when he jumped. That's oh, what I okay. think. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's possible he died when he jumped. So they never thought, found a body though. So I thought he stay, I thought he stayed alive because, um, as he said, he was kind of a pretty experienced, um, player to jump, and I'm not really sure if he stay alive, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, maybe he was like an expert paratrooper. And maybe he was like, you know, he really knew what he was doing. He's like, whatever, jump out of the night with two suitcases. I know how to do this. Or so either he really, really knew what he was doing and he had like a plan that nobody else knew about, or he was just kind of like, yeah, I'll just get some parachutes and jump out of a plane with some suitcases of money and go to Mexico and eat tacos. Like it's, it's kind of hard to know for sure. That's why it's a mystery. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question, Brandon. Okay, next one is Xinran. Hi, Xinran. Hi, teacher. Hello. So my question is that I don't really understand that why people don't have their bodies found hmm. is the earth a big place or a little place a very big one it's a very big place right have you ever gotten <laughs> lost from your mom or your dad have you ever been lost from your parents I mean, if they jumped from the pl the plane or there must have been someone who saw them at last and then mm. they should have landed near there but why aren't there any bodies around that place that's a good question maybe uh because he did jump in like a kind of like a swampy area near the river like near like a river around the coast and so he jumped out of the plane at nighttime. And so in America, there's a lot of places where there's nobody who lives. And so it, this is a long time before the, it's is 1971. So it's before cameras were everywhere. And so it's possible that he jumped out of the plane and he could have maybe drowned in a swamp or maybe maybe he didn't die. Maybe he actually, you know, went is somewhere he, else and where is he now why can't we find him i mean his identity has to be the same yeah well if you look here at his picture that's the best picture of him that we have those aren't even pictures those are just drawings like today okay. every everybody has a camera right everybody is taking pictures of themselves you know, if you're in America or in China, there's cameras everywhere, right? But this was a long time before they had all the cameras everywhere. And yes. so they're not even sure what he looks like. 
Okay, I have another question. Like the man behind the iron mask, when did he start wearing the iron mask? Uh, well, let's go back to that story here. Uh, so the man in the iron mask. So this was in 1669. So he started wearing the mask in 1669. And then he just wore the mask from then on. But then, but like no one knows like why he had to wear the mask. Like he wasn't even allowed to tell people like, my name is Bob and I said something stupid about the priest and now I'm in jail forever. Like he wasn't allowed to tell anybody anything about him. So, Could yeah, he so actually I talk to anybody or he couldn't talk about himself? He could talk with people, but he was not allowed to talk about himself. That was part of his punishment. Kind of sad if you think about it, to live your whole life and never allow anyone to know you. It'd be a very then, hard punishment. How did he die? He just died of old age. Or he, okay. like, he lived for quite a while. He, I think it was like 20 years or so before he finally died. But he yeah he, he wasn't like executed he wasn't killed or anything like that he just died of a disease or old age while in prison mm -hmm. good but question the head of bastille saw his face and why didn't the head of bastille tell somebody the, the head of Bastille, the leader of the Bastille, the lead guard, he actually did not get know who he was. He, so mm. one day, the, the, the head uh, policeman of the Bastille, he just got a letter saying, this man, Eustace Doge, is coming to you. And he comes with a mask. And the letter says, Eustace Doge is coming to you. He is not to talk about himself. If he says anything about himself, kill him. So the guy didn't even know who his who this guy was. No, nobody ever saw his face. I mean, it says that the head of the steel was allowed to see his face. Or on, oh, there, yeah, you're right. Wow, good reading. Only the head of the best steel was allowed to see his face. I, I guess maybe they told the head of the Bastille if he sees his face or if he sees his face he's not allowed to say anything about um, why yeah only the head of the Bastille was allowed to see his face wow good reading um, but yeah so he was the only one allowed maybe he had to like wash his hair sometimes or you know clean his face once in a while but the, the head of the Bastille, he wasn't allowed to say anything about what he looked like or who he was. So it's still very hush-hush. Um, Some people, one, one thing I was saying was that one, one source that I read, so this said that the head of the Bastille was allowed to see his face. Another, uh, another source that I read was saying that the head of the, that actually the man came with the mask and, and even the head hadn't seen him. So there's different, there's different accounts, different stories hair. about it. How would he clean his hair or wash his face? Or he never did in 20 years. Maybe he wasn't allowed to. So maybe, maybe the head of the Bastille was allowed to take off. Oh, sorry, we're running out of time. Maybe the head of the Bastille was allowed to see his face. One other, some other books or uh, like websites I read said that nobody, not e nobody ever saw his face. Even the head of the Bastille that he came and was still like, Bleh. So, yeah, good question. I think we're running a little out of time. Thanks, Jerry. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night, okay?